Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, I'm back with another awesome Dollar Tree craft. Stay tuned. So remember the recent follow-up to the Heads Up video I did where I showed you the home decor canvas pieces? That's what we're working on today. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by. And welcome to all of my new friends and to all of my new subscribers. Welcome back to all of my longtime friends and longtime subscribers. Thank you all so much, so very much, for the wonderful ways in which you support me and my channel. Today we're going to take one of those cute home decor pieces and turn it into something useful for us or to sell at a craft fair or to gift to someone. So I'll give you a closer look at what it is in just a minute, but y'all know what time it is. It's time to make it. So I have two pieces of those canvas-like home decor boards that I didn't show you in the last video because I was in the process of deconstructing them. I have this one, which I absolutely fell in love with because for some reason it just reminded me of a quiet moment in the desert. I've never been in a desert. But that's what it reminded me of. And then this one, I just like the way that it looked, so I picked it out. But I am going to show you how we're going to take this and turn it into this awesome notebook. And you'll see how durable this is. And it's also refillable. So we're going to have a durable, refillable notebook because this one will not show a lot of wear and tear the more you carry it because the outside is that canvasy feel, which I think is more like a nylon or a polyester blend. But I'm going to open it so that I can give you a look on the inside. You might remember these sticky notes from that same Dollar Tree Heads Up video. So I'm combining the sticky notes, I'm combining a Dollar Tree um, notepad, and I'm combining Dollar Tree home decor to create this awesome notebook. So when finished, we have a notebook that measures four by eight and a quarter, and it is three quarters of an inch deep, and it is very durable. And like I said, y'all, it's refillable. So let me show you what we're going to need to make it. So I haven't decided yet which one of these I want to use, but I'm using one. And then I have some of the sticky notes. I have some left on this sheet that we're going to put in this new book. Then I have a piece that measures six by four. I have a piece that measures eight by eight and seven eighths. Then I have one of the Dollar Tree notebooks and this has the three sections to it. And this is cut at three and three quarters by eight. And then I have two pieces of medium weight chipboard and this chipboard is cut at four by eight and a quarter. And then I have one piece of that same medium weight chipboard and that chipboard is cut at three quarters of an inch by eight and a quarter. So if you're interested in the chipboard, check my description box for my Amazon storefront link. Visit the storefront link and go to the paper department. So to make the notepad, I was using one of the Dollar Tree three pack legal pad set. This is the junior legal pads. You can find junior legal pads anywhere. The original size is five by eight but we're going to modify that size and I'm going to show you how to do it. So let me go ahead and show you how I cut through my notepad. So I have the notepad here and I am just going to make a mark at three and three quarters. And I'll just bring my ruler down, make another mark, make another mark at three and three quarters and then make a mark at three and three quarters. And this ruler I got from the Dollar Tree as well. It's a very sturdy ruler, very well made, it's metal. And it really is a high quality ruler. So I am going to just take, and I think I might have been a little bit off on this one. So I am just going to take the ruler, line it up, make sure I have it nice and straight. And then I have a very sharp finger blade and I have replaced the blade so that I can get my cuts right. And all I'm going to do is just keep making passes until I have cut through all of the layers. Now, if you don't want to cut through all three layers all at once, 
You can separate these if you want and then just join them back together in the book. But all you need to do is just keep cutting and going through. And that is how you can cut through this thickness if you don't have an electronic paper cutter or if you don't have a paper cutter that will cut through all of those all at once. So this is how I'm going to remove the canvas from the block of wood. I've already started it. And basically all I'm doing is I am taking this little weeding tool that came with my Cricut and I'm just going under and just forcing the staple up enough so that I can grab it with my pliers. This might not be the way that some of you want to do it, but it is the way that's working for me. So then once I have those staples raised, I can take my pliers and just pull that staple out. And let's grab that last one. And so there is my stretch piece. You're going to end up with this piece of wood remaining. I'm going to save this because I have a few ideas for how I might want to use this as well. So these are the two that I have and I thought I wanted to go with this one in the beginning, but I think I want to go with this one. So we're going to treat it just like we would paper. I'm going to go ahead and peel away the tape backers from my chipboard pieces. And now we can take our pieces and just place them in position. I'm not going to tape them down just yet. I want to get them in position so I'll know where I need to place them. Because I want to make sure that I have even sides on both. So I think I have good placement here. And I'll start with my spine place that spine. Then I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to place it down, giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. I'm going to take this piece and place it down, giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. And then I'll just use my big old spatula to make sure that I have everything nice and stuck. And it also helps to get rid of the fold line so that I don't have any on the front of this piece. And I do think that this is going to be a very cute little notebook. Now I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off some of the excess. So now I'm just going to miter those ends the way that I ordinarily would. Let's see if my finger blade will cut this because I didn't even try it. I just thought it might be too much of a challenge. But yeah, it will cut it. I don't feel as though I have as much control as I normally do, but it will cut it. And it actually caught right there, but that's not going to mess up the project. So now I'm going to take some tape and just place it around the perimeter the way that I normally do on all four sides. And fold and burnish that. Then we'll peel away that tape backer and now we can fold over our edges. I'm going to add just a little bit of tape right here to the ends because I need to make sure that I have complete tape coverage. And now I'm going to stand this up, 
fold it over like that and then I'll do the same thing on this side we're going to peel away that tape backer I'll stand this up and we will fold it over like that and now I can take my big old spatula and just go around and get that nice and stuck and now I can take my tape and we're going to cover the chipboard and tape I'm going to grab my liner piece which measures 8 and 7 eighths by 8 and we just need to place tape around the four edges of this piece. I've already done three so we just want to place our tape like that. So now we just need to peel away the tape backers from both pieces and we're ready to place down our liner so I'm going to peel away the tape backers from the liner piece as well as the chipboard jacket. So before I place down the liner, I'm going to go ahead and lay down some crinkle seam binding. That's going to be my closure for the book. About two pieces cut at 12 inches and I'm just going to place those there. Then I'm going to place just a little bit of glue at the end so it'll hold that crinkle seam binding in place and so now we can take our liner piece and I am just going to place that down and I'll use my big old spatula to make sure that I have a good stick Then I'm going to make sure that I go in and define my spines. And so now y'all we have a beautiful, beautiful jacket. I am just going to loosen the spine a little bit by wiggling it back and forth. And I don't have to worry about this spine cracking. And so now I'm going to bring in the piece that measures six by four. And on the six inch side, we're going to score at one, rotate it to the opposite six and score at one. And then we'll fold in like this. Then I'm going to take my notepad that measures three and three quarters by eight, go to the last page in that notepad, take this piece and just wrap it around to make sure that we'll be able to slide the replacement in and out. Then I'm also going to make sure that I test this in my book so that it is going to fit without actually hitting the spine. Everything looks good. So we're just going to take this piece, place it around that piece, and then you need to slide it all the way up until it won't go anymore like this. I'm going to take my glue and add glue to this piece only. Get that glue out of the way. And now I can take this and just decide where I want it in the book. And I want to make sure that when I put it down it's not sticking out here, it's not too far here, and it's not too far there. So like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, this one is just right. So now I can lift up, go in, and get that nice and stuck. Now I can slide the pad out, nice and stuck. And now we have a refillable notebook. 
So I'm going to take some of these sticky notes and just decide where I want to put them. I'm probably not going to put as many as I did in the first one, but it's completely up to you how you want to do it. I'm just going to scatter them all willy-nilly like. And then I'll take this skinny and I think I'll put it right there. And I have this sticker that says every day is a journey and I'm going to place it right there. And now we have a very beautiful little journal. I am going to go ahead and close it. And then I have these rub-ons from the Dollar Tree. I think I'm going to see if I can rub on love, peace, and joy. And I might try to get this as well. So let's see if we can add just a little bit more cuteness to this. So I'm just going to take this off and we're going to see. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this right here. I haven't tried putting rub-ons on this material before so we're going to see together if this actually works. So all we have to do is rub on, apply some pressure and then you can start peeling away to see if it's working and it does look like it's sticking but when I peel away I'm just going to peel away a little bit at a time just to make sure and I'll take my fingernail and just go back over what might not be sticking And the rub on won't be perfect, but it's going to be cute. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. So now I'm just going to take the back side of this and burnish that in. So now we have that cutie there. I think I need to add just a little something because I think if I put this right there, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to place this right there and we're just going to rub on. So I really am doing some genuine Dollar Tree crafting here because even my rub-ons are from the Dollar Tree and they're rubbing on very well. So let's just remove that. Turn this over. Burnish that in like that. I think I'm going to just take this one just to sort of tie in the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to put that right there on that Y and just rub it in. And so y'all, I think that this is just absolutely stinking cute. I don't know about you, but I think that it is. I'm going to open it one more time so that you can see we have our note pages here. 
we have some sticky notes here and I had gotten some comments about how well do the sticky notes stick. Well, I've been testing them out and I have this one that I attached to my computer and it's been on there for about 12 hours without any problem. So I'm not a big sticky note person because I don't like having them all over the place. But for me, having a sticky note up for 12 hours as a reminder is more than enough time. But if you have any concerns about how these sticky notes stick, then you can always replace them with some that you're more comfortable with. So when you've used all the sticky notes, really all you have to do is replace these little pads with something comparable. And then you'll have a refillable here as well as a refillable over here. So I am going to bring that first one back in. I love them both. And I don't have a favorite. Do you? If you do, leave me a comment below and let me know which one is your favorite. When I open this, it says home. And when I saw this, I fell in love with this one. I just think it's gorgeous. And I think they're all gorgeous. And I love the way that we're able to use these and turn them into very durable notebooks that we can then turn into refillables. Y'all, something like this, I know, would be an awesome craft fair seller. So why not pick up some that are perfect for spring and summer? And that way, if you're doing a spring craft fair, you can go ahead and introduce these lovelies on your table. So in the words of the greatest one-stroke painter on planet Earth, Donna Dewberry, wasn't that fun? Yes, it was. And I absolutely had fun sharing this with you guys. So I hope that you have enjoyed this awesome way that we're able to take those home decor pieces and repurpose them for everyday walk around use. If you have, please hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.